I've been coming here since 1974. Just love my Saturday nights down here. You've got four guys in a race going up to 80 mile an hour, no brakes, and just sheer entertainment. Raymer on the inside and Fisher in green. Here we go in heat one across from the outside. Adrian Rommel gets a good start. Down goes Paul Cooper. It's a sport that if it grabs you, it really grabs you. It really gets, you, you really get into it. <laughs> I think the smell's the first thing that grabbed me. It's the, the fumes, the methanol. It just sort of gets your heart racing. Mikovsky around the outside of Stoney and the number three for Berwick's in front. The, the sheer speed. There's certain places in the track you can stand around the track and it's unbelievable how fast they're going. The Friday Sports Show on Radio Borders. Yes, welcome back to the Friday Sports Show. What have people made of uh, a butcher and a, a grocer running a speedway club? Well, <laughs> we came in, you know, came in for a lot of flack with that right at the very beginning. I can understand it because... Um, Although Linda and I are staunch Berwick Speedway supporters, our knowledge in running the, the actual team was very limited. Can I have a pound of statements, please? Berwick was sort of going down and down and down. Linda and I, because of our, our passion towards Berwick and our love for the Speedway, we couldn't let it go. To start with, there was about 12, between 10 and 12 people who were interested. But when we went to see the checkbook, there was no checkbook there. So it ended up with Linda and I taking it on on our own. It was the end of the last season, the owner of the Bandits put them up for sale. It was close to the wire, very. You wake up in the middle of the night and think, oh, got to do this, or, you know, a completely different world, press releases, things like that. I've never, ever had to deal with anything, anything like that. Emails, I used to get about four or five a week, and now you open your computer up and you've got 40-odd emails just in the, in the one day. Huge pressure, but uh, it'll be worth it at the end of the day. That's William Lawson, Gino Franchetti, Michael McCoskey, Paul Clues. That's the Riders places for the season. It's only nine or ten weeks since we actually bought the Speedway and we've got our first meeting a week on Saturday. There'll be sleepless We're nights dream, and there'll be, yeah. Both of us are living a dream. There'll be three o'clock wake up calls in the morning with a, oh my God, what have we done? But it just makes it even more challenging. When we first said we were taking over the club. First I went and seen my lawyer and he said, are you mental? Do you realise what you're doing? And I says, yeah. I says, but I want to do this. We are going to do this. He says, well, I'm sorry. I can't act for you. I can't advise you to take this over. So then I went to my accountant and he came up with the most, more or less the same thing. He says, John, I've always had respect for you as a businessman. You've been a successful businessman. Why do you want to take over a speedway? a speedway track, which you know nothing about. I'm sorry, I can't advise you in it. When we went to the bank, of course, it was a similar situation yes, to start with as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We do realise that there is a big gamble at stake. My wife is dead against me doing this. All we could do is, is lose a lot of money at the end of the day, money that we've worked hard mm -hmm. for. But more than anything, I think the upsetting part of it would be to be a failure, to go into Berwick, to go to the bank, to go out for a drink and people say, oh, that's the, those people that tried to get the speedway up and running and it stopped, you know, and I think that makes it even more determined not to let that happen.